Hey campers, Pastor Craig here. We want to welcome you to our very special virtual summer camp here at Camp Yorktown Bay. We want to start every day by spending some time with Jesus. And one of our staff members, McCall, will lead you in that activity before we head over to flag raising and stuff. So let's go find McCall. Hey y'all, my name is McCall and I am waterfront director this year. I was a lifeguard and counselor last year. And I'm so excited because I'm going to be talking with you all about choosing certain things each day in the morning. So today is day one and I want you all to choose gratitude today. So what you will need is a Bible, a mason jar and a glass, and a pen and small pieces of paper. But first with me, could you open the Bible to 1 Thessalonians 5, 8, 18. It reads, give thanks in all circumstances for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. You know, back in March, we all kind of just the world just stopped and we had to go our separate ways. You may be missing friends, family, and you know, you might be confused or um, don't understand your circumstances at the moment. And maybe your circumstances are negative or they might be positive. But whatever the situation you find yourself in, I want to challenge you all to find gratitude and choose gratitude in Christ Jesus each morning. So spend time cultivating a deeper relationship with him and growing your walk together. If you do this, you'll be strengthening your thankful heart and it will impact not only you, but others in your life. So I have an activity for you guys to do this morning. If you have a spare mason jar or glass lying around your house, I want you to grab it and grab a pen and maybe cut up small pieces of paper or you can rip them too if you don't have any scissors. And what I want you guys to do is at least once a day, write something you're thankful for and place it in the mason jar. You will be so surprised about how quickly your mason jar fills up and as well as your heart, your thankful heart. It will grow in gratitude. So whatever your circumstances may be, I encourage you all to choose gratitude each day and grow deeper in your relationship with God because He is the only one that can bring you happiness and gratitude. Thank you all for joining me, and now we're going to say a prayer. Dear Lord, thank you so much for bringing each of these campers here today. Lord, I ask that you be with them, and I hope that they choose gratitude each day, and I hope you show them that in you they can be happy throughout their day, no matter what their circumstances can be, that you can show them happiness along the way. Please be with each of them, Lord, and help them to have a wonderful day. Thank you so much. Bye, y'all. This is how we do it at CYB. CYB, attention! Color guards, fall in! Public for to sins, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Wow. 
back please stand back yeah what's your name Ethan Ugh, uh, Ethan can you please go sit in the corner the doctor will be with you shortly okay Ugh. ew oh what's your name uh, Brandon Ugh. Brandon can you please go sit over there the doctor will be with you shortly. All right, thank you. Ugh, what's wrong with him? Hey man, hey, what, what's your problem? I'm itchy. You're itchy? Yeah, what oh, are you in for? So good. I, I'm, I'm kind of twitchy. You are? Yeah, a little bit of floppy too. <laughs> <laughs> I'm starting to get itchy. Yeah. Ah. I'm starting to get a little. Ah. Oh, that's not good. <laughs> oh. Ah! Oh, oh my word. What, sir, what's your name? Andrew. Please stand in the back. Please stand back. Oh, okay. The doctor will be with you shortly. Ugh. Hey, guys, what's up? <laughs> uh, we're floppy. Itchy. Itchy, yeah. I'm poppy and twitchy. Oh. Poppy? A little. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. Did y'all say y'all were itchy? Yeah, man. I'm itchy <laughs> and floppy. Oh, no. This isn't good. Excuse me. Oh, honey, you're so cute. Yeah, it's my baby Patagonia. Well, go ahead and sit over there, okay? Yeah, Thank we're you. just trying to see. Oh. Oh.
Hi campers, uh, I just want to have a word of prayer before we begin. Uh, dear Lord, thank you for all the many blessings you have given us. Uh, help us to remember these blessings and help us to always remember that you hear our prayers. Amen. My verse for this talk is Matthew 7:7. 7, 7. It was the verse used a year or two at camp. Ask of God and he will answer you. Seek and you shall find. Knock and the door will be open. And I have a story that goes along with that uh, from last summer after camp had ended. Many of you know Chandler and Sabrina, the longtime uh, boats crew members that I worked with for several summers. Uh, it was their wedding last summer in New Mexico. So we went out to New Mexico to visit them and to participate in the wedding. And uh, one of the activities on Sabbath was a hike up to a waterfall. And so me, DeArmond, uh, Mitchell from uh, activities and also from Waterfront, uh, Chandler, Sabrina, Miss Anna, Austin Lambeth, Hayden Lambeth, all former uh, staff that you guys might remember, uh, went on a hike. And as we were hiking, we were swimming in the waterfall, we were having a bunch of fun, taking pictures, enjoying the day before those two got married. It was a ton of fun, kind of a little camp reunion. And once we were packing up to leave, uh, we kept searching and like people were leaving and uh, we stayed behind a little bit because we were having fun. The water was really cold, so we were just enjoying it. It was refreshing. We were up in the mountains in New Mexico, and we just had had a fun day. And as we went to leave, uh, we had gotten everything together, and DeArmond had drove me and another person to the waterfall to go swimming. Uh, well, once we got to the car, he realized he couldn't find his keys. And this happens a lot. Everybody loses their keys at least once. You know, it happens from time to time. But we couldn't find them at all. And we were in a very unfamiliar place. And it wouldn't have been as a severe situation, but we were three hours away from where we were supposed to be, and we had a timed meeting to be back that was just a little bit around the time we had to drive back. So we probably were... I think, I think it was a three hour drive. It was one to three, I don't remember. It was a long drive and we had about that much time to get back, but we didn't know where his keys were and no one else had room since they had all packed in cars to travel up there. And so we started looking and asking and searching and we checked his car, if it was unlocked, it was locked. We couldn't find the keys there. We checked other people. Oh, do you have your keys? No, but uh, we can't stay and help because we've got to go get back to the, to the schedule and we've got to get back to the wedding plannings and stuff. And so we're like, oh my, everybody's leaving. It was just us and like another car that was there with the group of like three or four cars. And all of us were looking, we were checking, and then all of a sudden we got together and we prayed, and then we kept looking, we couldn't find anything. His keys were missing. His keys were for a Subaru car, and they had a little key on them, and then a little leather shape of Texas that was connected to it, kind of like a key ring. And we prayed again, and then we're like, oh, we don't want to get back in the water because it was so cold. And we're like, but if we have to, this is the only way that we can go home. And so we got in the water and we looked around and there was nothing. It wasn't a very big swimming hole. It was probably only 20 by 15 feet. And it wasn't more than four or five feet deep. So it was really small and like you could go around and feel, but you couldn't see because the rapids were coming down on top of it. And so we eventually got together. We're like, y'all find anything? No, no, no. We walked up and down the creek a ways. No, nothing. And we prayed. We huddled up underneath the waterfall in freezing cold water and said a prayer. And it took a few more minutes and we were looking and we kept searching faithfully. And all of a sudden, when we're about to run out of time, I stick my foot down in the waterfall and I feel something. And I was like, this is weird. 
And so I reached down and grabbed it, and it was his keys. And that was when it hit me that God really does listen to our prayers. We asked God for help. We sought out his help. He answered the door because he was knocking and we answered it and he was there. It, it was one of those moments that I will never forget because of how present God was. When we look at the big picture of things, was it that important that we had to be there for this one scheduled meeting at a certain time? in the grand scheme of earth and everything and all that's going on. No, it wasn't that big of a deal. I mean, we could have missed it. We weren't essential uh, members of the bridal party. Yeah, we were in the wedding, but we weren't essential. They could have gone on without us. Like they had the bride, they had the groom, they had the family. But when I looked back at it, even though it was something that was so small to where God didn't want to keep us any later, he still kept us safe. And that was what was awesome. And along with that, there could have been a reason that God kept us safe. As we were driving back, we saw police lights on the road be right before we got into town. And we checked the news, and it wasn't good. The news wasn't good of what had happened in the town before we got back. And we were sitting and thinking, uh, if those police lights were there, and we were there when that crime had occurred, what would have happened? What would have been the outcome? Were we, were we like not allowed to find our keys because God didn't want us to leave yet? And that just crossed my mind. I'll never know until I get to heaven and ask him. But it was interesting to me when it all came together. And yeah, he answered our prayers. He found our keys. We got back on time. But to then, as we were rolling into town, see the cop cars over on the side, look it up, there was a crime scene, it had happened about the time we would have got back if we would not have lost the keys, and think, God is looking out for us. We don't know how many times he's protected us from dangerous situations by distracting us, by maybe taking our keys, or maybe giving us a flat tire. Yeah, we get really negative in those situations. A lot like right now. A lot of you are in quarantine, you haven't been out, you haven't seen your friends, you're really frustrated, but God could be keeping you there for a reason. There might be someone in your family that needs to know Jesus better that you can share them with. There might be something that you need to stay away from that God is keeping you from. You never know what it is, but I know that in that moment, God was looking out for me and my friends, and I know he will do the same for you if you ask of him and you pray and you trust that he's there. Let's end it with a word of prayer. Dear Lord, thank you so much for looking out for us, for protecting us, and for guiding us through this life. We got a lot of questions because we are nowhere near as smart as you. It's crazy to think that you've got it all under control, and yet we still worry. We love you so much, Jesus, and pray that you bring us back together soon, if it be your will. Amen. Good morning, campers. I hope you really enjoyed our camp council and singing along with us and praising God. And now I hope you enjoy the rest of our virtual camp today. See you soon. Uh, hi guys, it's Sydney with Crafts and I'm just going to teach you guys how to do the bracelets. I know that you really wanted to learn how to do that. So you're gonna need at least two different colors of string and you wanna make it arm's length and then fold it in half, tie it off, and that's how you're gonna get it started. So the first one that we're going to do is just a simple uh, round strand. Well, all you're going to do is just take the string, fold it over so that you have a little loop on the side. And then you're going to take the um, little tail part, wrap it around, and then through the loop. And then pull it straight and then keep going from there. And with the second one, it's almost like that, except for that you have the different colors and the different sections. So you're only going to go one string at a time instead of around all of them. So then you're gonna take your strand, go over, make a little loop around, and then through the loop and pull it tight. And you're gonna do that twice on every color strand. And then once you get to the end, you just start over with the other ones and then you just keep going from there. For this one, you are going to need your parents' permission. We are doing stained glass windows. 
and they come off very easy. All you need to do is just scrape it off. And what you're going to need is acrylic paint, any color you want, it doesn't matter. You're going to need dish soap and water. So first you are going to need to pour in your paint, any like desired amount that you have, you pour it in, and then you have one drop of dish soap in it, and then you're going to pour your water in, and the water needs to be about half of the amount that you have paint in, and then you mix it together. And then all you have to do is paint. So we are going to be doing crayon art, and you're just going to need a piece of paper, some crayons, scissors, wax paper, and glue, and an iron, and you're going to need your parents' help with this, and all you're going to do is take your strip of paper and draw an outline on it, any shape that you want, and then with your parents' help, cut it out of the piece of paper folded on both sides, so you're going to cut through both pieces. And then you are going to get your wax paper and with your parents' help, shave a crown onto the wax paper, fold over the wax paper, and get your iron and iron over the wax paper so the crown melts. And then you are going to glue it inside your frame. And then once it is inside your frame, cut around it so that all you have is your frame.